Good morning, Interweb. War Builders Log 14. Today we are going to learn how to create new plates midway through the simulation. Specifically, we are going to fracture this continent in half. I was going to do it over here, but I think I'm going to reserve this continent for something in a future video. So as always, when it comes to rifting things apart, we are going to find a failed rift, say this chap, and we're going to copy him, turn him into a real rift, and use that to split the continents in half. No new information here, exact same procedure as previous videos, time-lapse mode, engaged. And remember that when we create this rift, we want to make sure we stretch it across the entire plate. So that's all the way to the mid ocean ridge here and all the way to the subduction zone here. Give it a plate ID of one, which we're reserving for rifts and input the correct times here. In my case, I'm looking at this rift starting at 850 million years ago, continue into the distant future, call it rift 850. And like before, I'm going to set this failed rift to end at 850 and create new failed rifts on either side of the continent. Again, no new information. Now, new info here, if we want fail rifts or anything on this new section of crust, it's a little bit trickier because there's no crate on there. So thus far in the simulation, we've been assigning plate IDs based on the nearest crate on. So this fail rift here, I gave it a plate ID of 200 because this crate on here has a plate ID of 200. No such structure exists here. So what you have to do is hit L on the keyboard to draw out a fail rift. And let's pick say here, for example, and we'll just do a little rift, beautiful. Go to create feature, it's continental rift, hit next. Now for the plate ID, give it a plate ID of 201. That is the plate ID of this continent, but incremented one. And then everything else is normal. Beginning time, whatever suitable, failed rift with the timestamp noted as well. All right, and then hit next. Don't worry about this, hit next. And we'll put it in the failed rifts feature collection and we'll go create. So next we need to split the continent, the ocean crust, subduction zone, the island arcs, just like we did before. On the craton side of a continent, it's exactly the same as before. So I'll do all that real quick in time-lapse mode. On this microcontinent side, where we don't have a craton, where we're creating a new plate, it's a little bit different. So I'll talk us through that. So craton side, time-lapse mode, engaged. Okay, so that's that done. I have this ocean crust here cut out, this section of the continent cut out, and I've split the subduction zone, again, as per previous videos. Now for the microcontinent side. So to split the continent, hit F on the keyboard, click on the continent to choose that feature. Usually we'd go to clone feature here and then just drag all the vertices. That's gonna cause problems because we're creating new plate IDs. So you have to copy geometry to digitize tool, this button up here then hit X on the keyboard or come over here and start deleting points so we can sketch out this section. Okay, so there's our little microcontinent. I'm gonna to go to create feature. It is continental crust, hit next. Plate ID, we're gonna give it a plate ID of 201. Began life at 850 million years ago, correct. And its name, we'll call this micro continent one. And we hit next. Don't worry about any of this, hit next. And we will create a new feature collection for this. So 
select create new feature collection and go create and save. And we're gonna scroll down here to the bottom, new feature collection, and we're gonna save this as, we'll find our folder. We'll save this as micro continents. And we'll close. And now we can go back and select the entirety of the old continent, edit feature, controller command E, select the valid time, and I'm gonna say you need to disappear at 850 million years ago, just as this splits in two. Okay, now you'll notice here, this is blank. That's no good. So if we go over to our land section over here, twiddle down the drop down arrow, and I'm gonna go to add new connections, click on that, and I am going to select microcontinents. So our microcontinents will also get colored the same way as our main continents and island arcs. Speaking of island arcs, we need to do the same thing for them. So hit F on the keyboard, select the island arc. Again, we wanna cut out the section that is to go with the new microcontinent. So we do not clone. We go to copy geometry to digitize tool and then we hit X on the keyboard or come over to here and start deleting points until we're only left with the microcontinent section. There we go. Hit G on the keyboard to bring back into like polygon mode. Hit create feature. This is an island arc. Hit next. Theta D, 201, correct. Begins at 850 million years ago, correct. And we're gonna say, Island Arc, 850. We're gonna go next. Don't worry about any of this, hit next. And then we're gonna drop this into Island Arcs. Hit create. So now we should have one section on this side of the continent, one section, oh, or this side of the rift, another section on the other side of the rift, and then we have our original feature. So I'm gonna select that, go up to edit feature, control or command E, and I'm gonna change that time so it ends at 850. Now, is that correct? That seems weird. Hold on, let me just do that and we'll figure it out. It seems like it's just not gonna be there at all. Um, hold on, is that gonna work for us? Yeah, cool. Same jazz with the ocean crust. Select our ocean crust. Do not clone feature go to copy geometry to digitize tool and then hit X on the keyboard to delete points and start deleting away all the points on the other continental side. So we're left with just this microcontinent section. Okay, hit G to bring up polygon mode and then go create feature. This is ocean crust, hit next. Plate ID is 201 because it's on the microcontinent side. The begin time is correct. It is not an island arc. It is ocean crust 850. Hit next. Don't worry about any of this. Hit next. And then we're going to put it in our ocean crust section and we go create. And then finally, we're going to hit F to select the entire ocean crust like we've done before and then simply delete it. So hopefully that's all gravy. Yeah, looks good. And finally, the remaining island arcs. Now I'm going to demonstrate how not to do this. So hit F on the keyboard, select an island arc. It is green, so it is going with plate ID of 200. We want it to go with this microcontinent. So again, you'd think you'd go to edit feature, control or command E, and then just simply select the plate ID and just change it to our new plate ID, 201. And you'll notice that it has disappeared. Well, actually it's not disappeared. It's just bounced over here for reasons I don't understand. So whenever it comes to creating new plate IDs or creating new plates, you gotta be really particular, otherwise this jumpy thing will happen. So I'm gonna undo that, go back to create feature, and I'm just gonna put its plate ID back to where it was. So to solve this, we're gonna do the copy geometry to digitize tool method. Before we do that, I wanna check its dating to keep everything legit. So I'm gonna go back to edit feature, controller command E, and this boy all was created at 950 million years ago. That's important, I need to remember that. So with it still selected, copy geometry to digitize tool, go to create feature. This is an island arc, plate ID of 201. Time of appearance here is not 850 million years ago. It is 950 million years ago when we first created it. Continues into the distant future, cool. And this is island arc 950. We go next, don't worry about it. Next, and we'll drop this into island arcs and we'll go create. So now we should have two copies here, one that I created 30 minutes ago when I first booted up the system and another that I created 17 seconds ago. So I'm gonna to go to the 30 minutes ago one and I'm just gonna delete that. 
And the exact same procedure applies to this island arc. So F on the keyboard, select the island arc, copy geometry to digitize tool, create feature. It's an island arc, cool. Plate ID of 201, cool, to match our microcontinent. I'm pretty sure this island arc formed at the same time as this one. So I think 950 is correct. So everything's great over there. Next, doesn't matter about any of this, next. And I'm gonna drop this into island arcs and hit create. Again, there should be two copies here. So I'm gonna get rid of the old copy and I'm gonna delete that. And now we want to label the subduction zones correctly to match with the microcontinent. Again, we can't just select the subduction zone and go edit feature and change the plate ID because it will bounce around the globe. So once again, copy geometry to digitize tool. So F on the keyboard, select the feature. This subduction zone formed at a thousand million years ago. Cool, so I'm gonna go copy geometry to digitize tool, then create a new feature. This is a subduction zone. Cool, plate ID of 201, great. Beginning time, thousand million years ago, and its name is sub 1000. Next, next, and then into subduction zones we go, and we hit create. I'm gonna select the old subduction zone, the one created 33 minutes ago, and I'm going to delete that. Exact same procedure applies to this chap here. Cool, now as you can see, if I scrub through the simulation, everything's broken. That's because GPATES doesn't know what plate ID 201 is yet. So we need to code some stuff to tell it what's going on. So hit Control or Command M to bring up the Manage Feature Collections dialog and just make sure that your rotation file here is saved. So I'm gonna save it. And then I'm gonna open up that rotation file in text edit. So below the relevant plate ID, in this case below anything that's labeled as 200, I'm gonna insert two new lines of code with the new plate ID. So 201, that's our new plate ID, space 0, 0.0, space 90.0, space 0, 0.0, space 0, 0.0, space three zeros, space exclamation mark. And this line of code is going to be our micro continent at the end of the simulation. Essentially, it's the exact same as what we've done before. Here, here, and here, but with a new plate ID of 201. Below that, we're gonna write another line of code, 201 again for the plate ID, space. Now for our time, we wanna put in the moment that this occurs. So 850 in this case, 850.0, space, and then 90.0, space, 0, 0.0, space, 0, 0.0, space, one, two, three zeros, exclamation mark. And this is going to be our start moving independently. Again, akin to what was going on here. Right, so let's get rid of those line breaks. Save the file, go back into GPlates, hit Ctrl or Command M to bring up the Manage Feature Collections and for the rotation file, reload it. Okay, nothing should happen yet, cool. Hit Ctrl or Command D. Alternatively, go up to Reconstruction and select Specify Anchored Plate ID, Ctrl or Command D. In this dialog box, insert the plate ID from which your microcontinent is splitting off of. So our microcontinent is splitting off of everything that has a plate ID of 200. So I'm going to put in 200 here and then I'm going to hit OK. Now, again, everything looks like it's broken and terrible, but it's OK. Don't panic. Hit Control or Command P. Alternatively, go up to Reconstruction and down to View Total Reconstruction Poles. Assuming you've done everything correctly, the anchored plate ID here should be the one that our microcontinent is splitting off of. That's really important. If it's not, this won't work. Assuming that is correct, go to Equivalent Rotations Relative to Anchor Plate. And in the plate ID section here, we'll see our new microcontinent or our new plate, 201, and we'll see the coordinates at this time. Those are gonna be important. So I'm just gonna push them over here and I'm gonna open up my rotation file again. So now I am going to create a new line underneath the two lines we just created. Plate ID again is 201. Time is exactly the same as the above line, but the coordinates here are going to be these coordinates. So 70.1652, Space 26.3856, 
that's that chap, space, negative 38.4047, space, and now instead of putting three zeros, we're going to put in the plate ID that the microcontinent is spitting off of. So in our case, that's 200. Then I'm going to go space, exclamation mark, and this line of code is going to be the end following C line of code. Then copy that line and paste the new line below. Change the time, this column here, for the start of the simulation. So 1000.0 in this instance. Don't change the coordinates, that's fine. Don't change the conjugate plate ID here, that's also fine. And maybe change the comment to microcontinent at the start of the simulation. Or rather, actually, microcontinent 1 at the start of the simulation and microcontinent 1 at the end of the simulation. So basically what we're doing is we're doing the decoupling of plates we did in the last video, but kind of in a sort of reverse order. Okay, let's lose all the line breaks. Again, I only put those in just to visually clear things up for me. Hit save, back into G plates, control or command M, and the rotation file, I'm gonna reload the rotation file. Nothing happens, that's totally fine. I'm gonna hit control or command D to bring up the specified anchor plate ID dialog box, and I'm gonna change this back to where it was, 000, and hit okay. Now, hopefully everything should be fine. I'm just gonna close the riffs thing here for a second, just to make it a bit cleaner. Everything should be fine. Everything should be moving okay. Yeah, perfect. No weirdness happening, but we've made it so that G plates knows that this chunk and this chunk, including all the associated island arcs, etc., are two distinct things. So now all that's left to do is skip forward another 50 million years to 800 million years ago and move these around. No new information, exactly the same as previous videos. Time-lapse mode, engaged. That's not the nicest movement, but I'm trying to get it to do a thing and prep for the next video. Not mega realistic what I just did. It really should have just kept going straight. Okay, I'm fairly happy with this. Uh, this isn't great, but just demonstration purposes, so we're fine. So next, as always, I'm just gonna lock in the drift correction so it doesn't go do something nuts like that. Oh, this fella will need to create a drift correction for him. So 201, play ID of 201, then 1.0 to match up with all the other 1.0s. Then I'm gonna paste in these coordinates, space, paste, space, zero, 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 exclamation mark, and this is drift correction. And then finally, with plate ID of 300, copy coordinates, paste them in get rid of line breaks. Oh, and I suppose it's worth mentioning, sometimes there can be a sneaky line break at the end that you don't realize that can cause G plates to go mad. So just make sure that's also gone. And then hit save, back into G plates, controller command M, and I'm gonna reload the rotation file. And once again, all of the flow lines just go bananas.
And just like before, we need to repair the flow lines and once repaired, use them to create more ocean crust. Most of this is not new at all, but just because we're working on the microcontinent down here, I'll talk through the flow lines between our old continent and this new microcontinent. So I'm going to go back to when they first split apart. That's 850 million years ago. In this instance, I am going to select this rift, copy geometry to digitize tool, and then hit M on the keyboard or go over to here, copy new multipoint geometry. It has to be that. Remember, really important flow lines won't spawn unless you've hit copy multipoint geometry or M on the keyboard. And then I'm going to go to create feature. This is a flow line. Next left plate ID, well, that would be this plate ID here, which was 200 in this case, and the right plate ID, that would be 201, our new plate. They begin at 850 million years ago. They'll continue in the distant future, and their names are going to be flow lines 850. Next, now we want to go to add. So from 850, when they are first created, to 0, 0.0 in steps of 10 million years. Perfect. Hit insert. Just do a quick double check. 850 all the way to zero. Perfect. Hit OK. Next, and we'll put these into flow lines and hit create. Now, these should be nice here. Oh, snap. Okay, not a deal breaker here at all, but I really should have put a point along the coast so we can get another flow line here. It It's fine. It's not a problem. Okay, end of my timestamp, 800 million years. Going to hit F on the keyboard. Going to select those flow lines. Copy geometry to digitize tool. Then hit G on the keyboard. Or come over here to digitize new polygon geometry. And now I am going to create ocean crust for this new rift. Plate ID, it is attached to the microcontinent. So plate ID of 201. Beginning time is at the end of this time step. So that's 800 million years ago. And this is ocean crust at 800 million years. Hit next, next, and then we put this into ocean crusts and hit create. Exact same procedure on the other side. Okay, cool. Okay, now let's sort out these flow lines. So I am going to delete those and I'm going to go back to where these continents rifted, in, rifted apart. So that would be 850. Oh, not 850. Sorry, that would be 900. Yes, there we go. Now I'm going to scrub through and I'm going to need to split this rift. So we get one set of flow lines that go between pink and green and another set of flow lines that go between pink and microcontinent. So where is that split current? Well, it's there because that's the rift that we re-engaged. Yeah, perfect. So back to the moment of rifting, 900, F on the keyboard, select the rift and then hit T on the keyboard. And I'm going to split that line here. So we should end up with half a rift on this side and half a rift on this side. Perfect. Select whichever half you want. Copy geometry to digitize tool. Make it points by hitting M on the keyboard. Go to create feature. This, uh, these are flow lines. Left plate ID, we'll call that 300. And the other plate ID, the right plate ID, we'll call that 201. So we're stretching it between here and here. Perfect. These will begin at the moment of this rift thing. So that's 900 million years. And these are going to be flow lines 900. Cool. Next. Now we want to add some flow lines. So from 900 million years ago to zero in steps 10, insert, do a quick check. 900 to zero. Perfect. Hit OK. Next. And we'll put these into flow lines and hit create. And then hopefully they will split off really nicely for us. Brill. Okay, cool. Now I'm going to put in some ocean crust, same as before. Time lapse mode engaged. Plate ID of 201 because it's attached to the 201 plate. Plate ID of 300 because it's attached to the 300 plate. Okay, and then same deal for the other side of the rift, except this time linking pink to green, 300 to 200.
Cool, and like before, we have this triple junction formed here. So we're going to select each of these uh, adjacent segments, insert a point, and then drag that point into the center to form like a triangle shape. All right, now same deal as before. I'm gonna connect up 100 to 300 and 100 to 200. So we're gonna to have to go back to our initial rifting event. In fact, actually, let me just kill the flow lines as they are. We can delete you, perfect. So back to our initial rifting event, the very, very start. F on the keyboard, select the rift. Oh, I've turned rifts off, hold on, rift, there we go. And same thing again, copy geometry to digitize tool, make that point make it flow lines, etc. You know the deal. Okay, and just like the previous video, I'm gonna make a point. So select digitize new multipoint geometry or press M and I'm gonna insert three points here. One to join up blue and pink with flow lines. Another to join up blue and green with flow lines. And a final one to join up green and pink. Okay, and now I'm gonna extend these bits of ocean crust up to meet these new flow lines. So F on the keyboard, select the ocean crust. I'm gonna hit I on the keyboard to insert a point. I'm gonna insert two points, one here and one here. Hit V on the keyboard and then drag those points into position. Same thing all around. Okay, and just like before, when we have this triangle shaped hole in the ocean, we'll add some points and extend them out to the center to kind of complete the ridges. Cool. Okay, so that is that. Over the past few videos, we've basically looked at all possible divergent boundaries. I can't think of any other way of how might one might want to split apart continents. We covered how to split continents apart into independently moving cratons and co-moving cratons. And then we learned how to split those apart. And in this video, we learned how to split apart microcontinents from other continents. Those handful of techniques will do the entire simulation for you when it comes to the divergent boundaries. In the next video, we're gonna look at convergent boundaries, how to work it when continents collide again. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching folks. Thanks to World Building Pasta, whose methodology this is. Thanks to Vanga Van Gogh, resident artist, and until next time, Edgar out.